What are we talking about? <laughs> so, what's what's the? Are we doing a video? Video cast. So you're gonna be taking a right turn here, <laughs> turn three. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Laguna Seca, though, is it? <laughs> hey guys, I forgot where pit lane was. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I bet it's happened where um, they think they're out. Like, guys, Dover feels different, and it's like <laughs> Michigan. Chicago land? Yeah. <laughs> How would they know? <laughs> Guys, it feels really different today. Grit is different. Guys, should we be turning right here? <laughs> that was so good. You guys aren't going to believe me, but there's no <laughs> driver in the car. That was my favorite one. Dude, I was crying. And I was crying. And I was crying in that one. <laughs> Guys. Hey, so we cemented your steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's going to sound like unbelievable, but the steering wheel is welded. <laughs> so we put in broomsticks for your sway bars. Go ahead and see in turn three if it works out. <laughs> Why is there three clutch pedals, guy? <laughs> All three do the same thing. So we inverted the steering. <laughs> if, I, if I turn left, it goes left. And if I turn right, it still goes left. <laughs> Podcast only breathing in when we talk. <laughs> That's the best. Well, I get the <laughs> That's so bad. I can't do anything. <laughs> I can't do anything. <laughs> I can't see anything. <laughs> Right. Hey everyone, welcome to Cafe Machina, episode number 11. We got Georgie Savalios, he's been on the episode before. So This episode, we're doing conspiracy theories in sports, in racing, wherever you've seen it before. Life. In life. <laughs> and uh, what better to do conspiracy theories with a debunker himself, the hype man of debunking, Georgie Professional Sav- debunker <laughs> on National Geographic. He's the, the main uh, discreditor to other debunker, Michael Shermer. Perfect. They call me XXX George. <laughs> He's the, the main protagonist of the Mandela effect. <laughs> Defender, avid believer. <laughs> avid, avid protagonist and believer of Mandela effect. The Mandela march. <laughs> so ca- so called Mandela effect Perfect. time traveler. So enough overqualifying me. <laughs> <laughs> enough of underqualifying XXXX <laughs> <laughs> parody account, George. Perfect. Uh, so before we dive into the podcast, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Yep. Subscribe below. Um, we're hyping up the YouTube channel, so check it out. And we want to make sure we give a, a, a big shout out to the podcast supporters. Um, first being small plug to LTD, uh, LTD Life. <laughs> Perfect. Check us out. Put me as a tier two athlete. Oh, sh- that's a bug. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> realize you have tarantulas in the office what is that thing we've been here <laughs> on your face are we just gonna continue <laughs> Wait, it's right. <laughs> it's so bad. It's right under the LTD plug. <laughs> I'm about to yak. Look at the. Are we recording over there? Yeah. That was so casual. <laughs> First you pointed like there was a ghost and then you were in shock and then you were like yo, yo there's a bug there's a dinosaur that's gonna stay there for the career entirety of the podcast should I clean it up call or? him call, name him X X X X X parody account George Perfect. all right continue okay uh, so there's ltdlife.org. I was going to say, literally, as I was saying that, what does it take to be a tier one athlete? <laughs> yeah, we're uh, 
<laughs> we basically have a new business model where 15% of the sales goes towards <laughs> athletes. That's the cause we're going to be donating, donating to. So if you want to be a part of that group, join our website, www.ltd-life. Fill out an application, and you know we're just reviewing these as athletes ourselves. Right. right. So you probably have a pretty good chance. <laughs> Join in. I feel like they got a tough chance because it's it's amidst some elite crew. <laughs> yeah, we have we have some solid athletes. Yeah, they're they're in there. <laughs> Your voice cracked. <laughs> Perfect. So we have some solid athletes. Solid athletes. <laughs> it's because of all the inward <laughs> talking we were doing. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Trying to Try talking while you breathe in. It's the new thing. It's the most impossible <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> well, I don't get why it's not perfected by humans. Right, so you think... It's Which, a... maybe this leads us into our first controversy <laughs> in a way. Is it? The the controversial unadvancement of human... What was the first one? We were saying the big one. The big, the big one is what? The big controversy we were talking about. Let's flip to episode let's 14. See, let's check them all out. Let's Page see what we came 14. up with. Wait, first, let's finish the show sponsors. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> uh, so, to finish. Sponsor um, right now is going to be like, they forgot about me. <laughs> yeah, they totally forgot. <laughs> Just moved on with the podcast. Uh, minus 273, uh, the racing gloves. Have you used them before? You, you yeah, need, definitely. Okay. You They're the best? They're the best. They're, they are the best. It's guaranteed 300s yeah. of a second by wearing these gloves. At so, least. <laughs> uh, so minus 273.biz, check them out um, and gain at least 0.03 of a second. Sponsor number three, onit.com. That's on it. Uh, total human <laughs> optimization. I'm using Alpha Brain right now and I'm not Beta Brain. That's for sure. So if you notice that I'm hustling through this, it's because of the Alpha Brain. Perfect. <laughs> I need to give you some. I need to check you some. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and finish that off with Molecule. Molecule, moleculesports.com for any gear so it doesn't have to be just used for motorsports i know we said that in the past yeah like you know for it works suit. so good it works so good but i use it as a household cleaner now really yeah because it's so good and uh that's the move yeah i think it's green too i think Perfect. it's yeah so green the walls greens or white or back to white no 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 <laughs> like as in it's economical it's, oh like, god it's not harmful <laughs> for your body but it also brings back color perfectly. Um, so molecule sports, but they also, the point being, they can clean your clothes. If you have grass stains on, maybe you play football, you're a little football yeah. player, you're like 14, you just got a bunch of grass stains on your practice gear, you're freaking out because your coach freaks out about that because he's ex-military coach. Hey, now you can just throw it in with molecule <laughs> that wash and you're in perfect back to perfect white. And you'll be right on top of it. You'll look like just clean, fresh, and the like cleanest. you didn't play it down, which is not good. So we're back into the co- podcast, Cafe Machina number 11, for conspiracy in sport and in racing and just in regular life as we established before yep. it as well. Um, so we wanted to talk through, first of all, the big one that we said in racing was, we're going to go right into it. We already got the sponsors over. What we want to talk about is everybody talks about Everybody says how, oh man, just we want to go back to the good old days the, of racing back in the right. 80s, the 70s when racing was so good, you know, when, yeah. when, pass, when they could pass all the time because you need to lower the aerodynamic grip and raise the mechanical grip. And so more the, power. And more power. So that the cars yeah. aren't so reliant on the, uh, the aerodynamics for grip. And then when they're following each other, then you get aero wash and you can't race. Right. So you can't, there's no passing. That's the argument. Now, we were talking about a a rebuttal to that. Is that true, honestly? Right. Is it true? Well, like, it just took three minutes of thinking for me to be like, well, yeah. Oh, wait. It's actually terrible racing. (laughs) Like, yeah, there's a driver 22 seconds off the pace. Like, in F1, 50s, or, you know, back in the day. And no passes, like, ever. Ever. Yeah, like, what, what we were talking about is, like, when we... When, when we see the highlights from racing back then, we're only seeing the highlights. We're not watching the full race from right. 1971 Belgian Grand Prix. You're watching, you're seeing the highlights of the best that they had of that time. Right. Like, we're not seeing those 50 laps they went following each other. Yeah, like... Big, widespread outfield. A, a one race highlight of nowadays is probably more eye candy than everything <laughs> Ever. <laughs> yes. Before that. In, For the last 30 years right. of racing. That's, That's very, very true. true, yeah. Yeah, and, and so I feel like, like our experience, like in the Pro Mazda car, 
that had dinosaur <laughs> arrow in from, it. Yeah, from, yeah, early 2000s. Yeah, like, like literally crazy. not the latest technology at all. And, and literally being from the early 2000s, it definitely did not use the technology available in the early 2000s. Yeah, and it's like 100 yards away? Nope, like <laughs> arrow push. Yeah, <laughs> massive arrow wash on the car. And so it was like, yeah, you know what? Like maybe cars are better. <laughs> they have less turbulence. Yeah. And I think that. we're dealing with just an open wheel problem. And you could expand on this further. Same dilemma. You know, people believe one thing, which isn't really true because they weren't there to witness, but like pay drivers, like, you know, oh, everybody's paying so much to be an F1. Like think back in the 70s and 80s and 60s, it was literally the richest, like right. only. You yeah. can buy your way so much harder than you could now. And it was like the owners were like, massive yeah like big rich people. and like yeah Hesketh. always been pay drivers yeah like james hunt came from a very affluent family you know but nobody complains about them you know it's just because that's people yeah. hate on what's going on now no matter the sport no matter what yeah because like, it's the present yeah exactly that's how it is that's how it totally is um like the halo everybody hates it but it's gonna be when you think back 100 years from now yeah let's talk about the halo so irrelevant irrelevant Let's talk about the Halo. I was watching a... Controversial. <laughs> controversial. That's a good idea. The Halo. We were. I was watching a little WTF1 video of the Halo when they were playing a video game. Yeah. They obviously dramatized it. It's not that bad. It's it's like a little... It's like, from a driver's point of view, it's it's like if you're cross-eyed, it would be a problem. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Nah, you'll adjust so quickly. Yeah. That's what it is. But I do think it might be a problem if you're on the front row seeing the grid lights. That I can see is potentially... Nah, they'll find fixes. How? For sure, 100%. How will they find a fix? Side lights, like in Renault. Yeah, but you don't get that until like... Well, they'll put them everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They'll lower, they'll lower them. Not a problem. What if it, it's got to pre prevent something though? I don't think so. I think it'll be completely fine. Prevent you from seeing... <laughs> Who you are. <laughs> <laughs> seeing God to your, break? <laughs> your score. <laughs> Nah, I think it'll be fine. You think it will? Yeah, for sure. No problems. No problem. Halo will stick. What about the windscreen? I, think, it, I think it'll develop into something way nicer, but it'll be the start. But like something that looks better. Right, right. Did you see the windscreen testing that they did? Looks really good. I like it. It kind of, it looks like a jet fighter. Yeah, it looks, looks fucking cool. Looks like what a car should look like. <laughs> yeah. Minus yeah. that curse beep that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do the beep though. All right, you will. Our editor will do it. Our editor. Sweet. Perfect. So, um, I like the windscreen. I think they're only going to use they it look for sweet. ovals. Yeah, they look, they look good. Like, I think it, I, I don't think it'll be a road course thing. I think just ovals. We'll see. Yeah, I don't, I don't know at all. We'll you know see. what's weird is that, okay, maybe the F1 did it um, for, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I Without feel like ovals. F1 should come out with like a, hyper bolt like cheat like hyper chamber or something like if indycar has that cool looking you know visor mm -hmm. and formula one has that light post in the middle like it shouldn't it be the other way around like indycar should have like one and then f1 should have like the most developed like coolest right right comes up only when it senses like danger <laughs> like so much more advanced i feel that would be insane they lagged on that that was their opportunity to you know, Formula E is doing this, F2 is doing this, IndyCar is doing this. We're doing yeah, let's talk. that. You like, know what? We're gonna, it's going to be a conspiracy episode, but <laughs> yeah. now you got me sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next next topic. Hold on. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the Formula <laughs> E car, the Gen 2. We so argued good. about this. <laughs> you think it's great? I think it looks great. I think it it's where motorsport needs to go for sure. You think? Yeah. But, okay, I get it. I get the development, but first of all, it, I mean, I guess it looks like a jet, kind of. You know, right. it mainly looks like a jet. But I don't know. I think there's something very cool to the wings, the you know, the wing type that we're used to. And I know we're used to. Yeah, but think think F1. So you have, like, the 60s cigarette cars to the intro to wings to the next step to the F1s with that started looking like the cars today, which, like, Montoya did, you know, that yeah. kind of cars, into the longer, higher nose cars, into the next thing. Like, it needs to keep... They've changed a lot. Like since we've since like motorsport started, there's been a lot of change. Right, right. And it's like staying in this four wheels, two wings is only going to last so long. Oh, no, get out of here! 
Yeah, for sure. It's floating gonna cars. Like you had an era where they were putting six tires on cars, like and so much weird stick. development. No, I know, but they were trying stuff and like <clears throat> changing it up. And I think that's pretty cool. Like trying to have it stay here or revert closer to the nineties cars, I yeah. think is not the right, it's not the way it's going to go. Like yeah. It's always going to be, you know, moving forward. But I want to say that there's never been a time before when they reverted to, I think like, Either yeah, we're, they've we're never gone facing, back. Yeah, we, we're probably facing a time in the sport where it's at this plateau mark, where it, it we're at the technology that we, I guess, truly feel is like optimized. And if we go any further, it's just going to cost a lot of money and a lot of time, and people don't have those budgets. The sport's not there. No, but and I think it, this it is, is where you see the sport of a decline. But I think it is going to go that way. Like electric cars, well, you know, no, big like change. Where IndyCar is, though. Oh, God. Because they regressed. They regressed the car. Yeah. They're literally, I mean, Formula One's been doing it for a while now, too, where they regressed the car. Or I guess they, they went up with it. But for a little bit, like in 2010, they were taking away aero off the rear. They were making like that really narrow rear wing and stuff. Yeah. But that's the better racing, literally. That's they their, tried for better that racing. That goes back towards racing. That yeah. whole Formula E talk goes back towards the conspiracy theory. What <laughs> about they change the cars for racing to make it better? <laughs> you think Formula E does? <laughs> no, no, just in general, like you know, they're the way cars are changing nowadays. Oh yeah, is to make the racing better. <laughs> they're trying to. They're trying to, but it doesn't. That's that. I yeah. guess that was the ultimate argument. I didn't. We didn't really address that. But the the overall overarching argument is that yeah, like literally, IndyCar has taken a car from what it was where they were just going crazy with aerodynamics. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Like, they, they went too far with that. I mean, it could drive upside <laughs> yeah, down. insane. Like, just some crazy stat with the downforce figures. Yeah. For what reason? Insert here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 2,000. <laughs> insert, insert on our green screen. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? What's that going to do? So, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, they went, they decided, okay, maybe we regress the car. You know, like I, it's, it's an odd thing. I think that's where sport has you a lot You can find out. that in F1 in the nineties too. With, where they went backwards? Yeah. Blown diffuser and all that, you know, the sport. But they brought it back. Like the. Oh, but actually the, um, active, active suspension. suspension and blown diffuser are gone. The f- yeah. ground effect thing. Right, right, right. They're both gone. But it came back. They allowed it. No, it's still not. No, not. but in 2010 or whatever, it was, mm. there was a loophole for 2011. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. But that. That was a loophole, actually. Yeah. It was the exhaust through the front, right? For So, um, Braun GP, I was literally, because I was looking up conspiracy theories, <laughs> and I was thinking like, oh, Braun GP, like that's that's one. Yeah. You know, because they... they uh, Crushed it. <laughs> crushed it for one year. Yeah, and I for guess five they, races. Yeah, for five races. They just, when they won, their competitors that would eventually overtake them at the end... Were terrible. Yeah. Were crashing out and DNFing, and so they got enough good enough gap. Yeah. But... That's insane that they won a championship. So crazy. Constructors and drivers. First year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, technically they're Honda, but they had Mercedes random engines, and but they just took advantage of that blown diffuser. And yeah. so it basically is like you have the regular diffuser mounts with the fences, and then on the top part where the arrow is flowing underneath from the side pods yeah. when it comes through, normally it's just drag over the tire, but it's blown through. They put two holes in it. And yeah. I guess that's it travels underneath and then creates low pressure. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a, a massive advantage that nobody else had. Yeah. Nobody. So that, yeah. They took it away. Degress. Did they did they take it at the end? I think it's banned. I'm they, not, well, I'm not sure actually. I don't know. I'm I know in twenty ten they just opened it up. Got it. But I don't know at twenty nine two thousand nine they might have Yeah, maybe. But anyway, changes are being made to try to make the racing better. Who knows? Who yeah, knows? and here's what I'll say too. Like, overtaking doesn't necessarily mean the racing is better. What you want is shoulders out rivalries, right? Like battles, yeah. like iconic I- battles. Like you see the passes from Senna to PK and crashes between them and all that. Or not, not PK. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Prost, Prost, <laughs> and uh, they're not like the greatest passes in the world. You can see like. Yeah, better passes for like Sergio Perez versus Hulkenberg, like right. in a normal race. You just watch in a race, and there's but they're not as they're, iconic. They're just icons that are and doing like, it. Yeah, from nowadays, like Alonzo Vettel when he pushes him into the grass at Monza, like that's what people want to see. Yeah, yeah. If you just have like a DRS overtake and the numbers are higher, like 
2014 versus 2013, there was 60% more passing 2014. Yeah. It doesn't mean it was a better race. Yeah, like the the fight between per- Perez and Hulkenberg, you know, could probably be a lot better passing and more like, oh, this is like mano y mano right now. And the fight is for like seventh, you know? Yeah. Versus, see, what I think we mistake for too is now like in 2018, everybody's so short attention span, you know, like we like two minute bangers yeah. versus like watching a, an hour long show yeah, to yeah. get the point of it. And I, I just think that's more viewers. I think people do watch stuff for an hour. I think we have that somewhat mistaken. But because like we're trying to tailor ourselves to that point, like what happened, I think what, sure, like the passing is better, like the actual passing between Perez and Hulkenberg versus Senna and Prost. And the numbers, I mean, more and, than the... Yeah, yeah, the numbers too. But no, like still Perez and Hulkenberg, like they're doing crazier stuff. yeah. It's just more about like the memory behind that pass. I think. Yes. So if there's more memories that stick in this century or in these 10 years or whatever, that'll be very remembered compared to back then. Maybe there was a total of 1,000 passes in those very memorable in those three years, but out of those, 200 are memorable. Right. And nowadays there's 15,000 passes in that same amount of time because of DRS and because of all that, but very few of them are like, You know, like, whoa, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is the same thing. That's the same effect you get when you get older. So, like, when you get older, the days blur together because there's way too much data to pull from. (laughs) Yeah. You know? When you're younger, though, each day is, like, a big day. It is, yeah. Like, the day we're going to the mall. Yeah, we went (laughs) to the mall. We went to the swimming pool. Yeah, right now it's, like, what what year is it? Like, when (laughs) we wake up? Is it Sunday? (laughs) Yeah, that's, that's I don't true. know what meal it is <laughs> as you're eating. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's true though. So when you get older, so there's too much data to pull from now. Yeah, that's and true. I that's think a good way to say it. The other part of it too is, I, I just think there's more. I don't think we have to reduce. Like I don't. I don't think we have to make more passes. I think that people that are now like 50, 60 years old. They're nostalgic of those moments, just as will be when it's like, yo, remember Nico Rosberg beat yeah. Lewis Hamilton for that championship? I think they got to like do, 80? yeah, the thing they got to do is hype up each player more. Yes. That's where the... Make them icons. Make them like, you know, Tony Stewart on the inside of Jimmy Johnson. Right. But that's got to be like Pascal Verlein versus Ericsson. Who cares about Pascal? Yeah, but that's got to be the hype. Uh, like, No, I know. Like NASCAR, you could have... There's 40 big names. So, like, you'd have a pass for 12th, and it's like, and look at them going for it on the inside, and you got 20,000 people in the in the stands just blowing up because right. while like, that pass is going on. Jeff Burton! Like, defend that position! But F1, it's just like... Uh, Rowdy on the outside! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe that's what they need to do, just build up the images of these drivers. Yeah, I, then, I think you're right. Then it'll just be memorable. Yeah, because Lewis Hamilton right now is an icon, and he's the only one. Yeah, and when he passes once a year... It's a highlight. <laughs> right. For 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I think with that, we because of that though, because the audience wants this thing of like, I want I want to see these amazing passes, we're wanting the wrong thing. And yeah, they're wrong. We don't need more passes no, at all. We don't. We need more iconic passes. Yeah. And with that though, sometimes it takes watching a full 60 lap race yeah, to see fine. it come down to lap 59. For sure, yeah. And what if they don't pass the whole race except lap 59? Are you going to be okay with that? Right. Yeah, and of course I, they would. We would. The the diehards would. But because there's so many people in like the middle Oh, range, yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. They're, they're messing up the data of right. like what we're asking for. Yeah. So I Although, think the diehards are okay with watching 60 laps. Yeah, leaving it to that might even make it like a really special pass. Like the ones we remember. Yeah. But since it's all like influenced previously, it's like... That moment's ruined. Yes. 100%. Now, yeah, now racing for even the diehard is like watered down. Right. Interesting. Yeah, that's kind of, I wasn't thinking we would talk about that, but passing as a <laughs> good point. All right. I'm so, happy with that. I, I think we should change the audience <laughs> uh, or at least change just, the title. <laughs> I think we should listen though to like what diehards want. Yeah, because for sure. They want that. Like they know the richness of the sport better. Maybe we than, need to sell out the, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> to what what the people want right what do you guys want the diehards like comment the, below in, <laughs> in the audio i guess you're listening so you can't 
<laughs> you can't no, comment. Video, video too, though. Oh, yeah, true. YouTube people. Comment below. <laughs> the below. This Wherever. Video. Comment below. Yeah. Or leave a review with a comment. <laughs> below. All right, and go into the controversies now. Let's go into like athletic, uh, athletic controversies, not organizational or oh, okay. fanatic. So uh, going into the talk rule, this was talked about by like an ESPN. Uh, what do they do? Like whatever it is, ESPN Classic or Films. But it's called the tuck rule. Yeah. Georgia didn't know about the tuck rule. For people that do. Crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, right? And the tuck rule, though, what we'll go into it really quick. So basically, tuck rule, it's enter 2001 Patriots versus Oakland Raiders. It's for the AFC uh, divisional playoff game. So before the, the title game to decide the AFC representation for the Super Bowl. Yeah. And... They, uh, it's, it's known as the snow bowl as well. So it happened in Foxborough in Massachusetts, just pouring snow and it's a 10 to 13 game fourth quarter, two minutes to go. Patriots are driving and Tom Brady's making some completions in the snow. Now remember Tom Brady's not the Tom Brady. We know as Tom Brady, right. it's not Tom. It's just Tom Brady. He's a quarterback for the Patriots right now. Yeah. He's not Tom Brady. No Super Bowls, yeah. But he's driving. He's making his thing, his trademark fourth quarter run against the nickel defense. He's going. And he's uh, going through, and they get, they're starting to get in within field goal range. They call a timeout. Go to the sidelines. They're talking about the play. And one of the Oakland Raiders players on the defense here over over here is like the play. And he goes over to the defense, tells them all what's going on. So they're ready. They go on, they snap the ball. Tom Brady drops back. All of his receivers are covered. He has got nobody to throw to. And the moment that he's like about to throw it, he's in the process. And then he gets hit by Charles Woodson, cornerback. They knew the play. And maybe they knew the play, maybe they didn't. It adds salsa to the story. <laughs> so Perfect. He, he goes, and this is where the tuck rule now lives in infamy. Because... He literally throws it, holds on to the ball, tucks it, but he's still in the process of throwing technically in the new tuck rule. Now, it's clear that he's like throwing, he pumps and like he's tucking it to be a runner and then fumbles. But because it, it's almost like he's throwing the ball. Yeah. Incomplete pass. Yeah. And so the ripple effect, <laughs> the ripple Patriots, plug. they go... They, they drive down the field. Adam Vinatieri, before Adam Vinatieri, was known as this clutch kicker. The first time he gets stepped yeah. in, Adam Vinatieri, the Super Bowl great, um, goes in, kicks a field goal, and it was like a 46-yarder in the snow. Just like an amazing kick to tie the game to go into OT. Clock runs out. And then the next, they, they win the coin toss, and boom, Adam Vinatieri kicks, kicks the game-winning field goal. And this crazy then sparks the next playoff run where then the pay, the Patriots go on to win the Super Bowl against the Rams and become, that's the start of the dynasty of the Patriots. Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, that dynasty. Insane, yeah. Insane. One thing triggered everything else. It triggered. And then on the downside with the Oakland Raiders, John Gruden gets fired. He's gone out of the Raiders system, gets on over to the Buccaneers, and he leads the Buccaneers to a Super Bowl to beat the Oakland Raiders Crazy. in the next year's Super Bowl. Karma. <laughs> and since then, the Raiders have not even... They didn't go to the playoffs again until 2016. That was in 2001. That's crazy. 15 yeah. years, no playoffs. Yeah. Isn't that nuts? <laughs> yeah, I guess that just shows, you know, it's never ogre. <laughs> <laughs> it's never... <laughs> <laughs> it's all <so> good. <laughs> and from that, the Patriots go on to win five other Super Bowls. And yeah. the Raiders haven't gone to the Super Bowl since. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. And, and now recently John Gruden hired as Raiders head coach, twenty eighteen, and he made a reference to that wasn't a fumble. That's insane. And like, it all conference. started from that little moment. Yeah. He was like, this is my swamp. <laughs> <laughs> the bug's going to be gone. <laughs> <Mid-sentence>. <laughs> <laughs> we should do them on purpose. <laughs> and switch that. <laughs> Back and forth. <laughs> <laughs>
there's the ripple effect of the talk rule. Yeah, crazy. And it, I, I just want to, what can you attest? Can you blame that on bad karma? Can you blame it on like voodoo? Like, what is that? What There's a commonality within these yeah. conspiracies. There's another one about the Bambino curse with the Red Sox. Yeah. And Kurt Schilling, the pitcher, it's, it was so hyped up by the media, but the team is called the Boston Red Sox. They're literally called the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> Red Sox. Red Sox. To, to show they're like hard knuckled, like yeah. I'm from Boston, you know, like bruisers. And that's their team name. And literally in pitching against the Yankees for the uh, divisional, again, to go to the World Series, to go to the field goal championships. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to score a touchdown against the Yankees. <laughs> um. The dude pitching Kurt Schilling, all of a sudden he had Slam ankle surgery. Dunk. No. <laughs> he literally was bleeding out of his ankle and seeped like into a red sock. And they went on to beat like a 38-year curse called the curse of the Bambino back from, or no, no, 84-year-old cool. curse. 84-year-old curse. And the dude pit that led them to the World Series win had like a bloody sock that was red. It, literally the sock was red. To, like Red Sox, it was like God. This is our this savior. This is made for it. Yeah, yeah like and it was like, is he hyping that up? Yeah, and, and how many big events could have had something trigger it like this? Imagine, like these are the ones we go that go viral. Like imagine thinking right. back on like other significant things. Oh my God, you probably if you find any significant thing, you probably could find something that's just such a coincidence on all of all of them. So you just yeah, they're like wow the sign. How many times have you done something where you're like. This is a sign. Yeah, like it's meant to be. I'm gonna eat a banana every time I race because I won the yeah. banana. The banana curse. Like, <laughs> curse of the I banana. think it's just you, for big events. You think back and find like one thing that you try to blame. You think? when it's bad too, you try to blame stuff, people, something, something. You always, Here's the thing. Here's the thing too. People, because people like dive into it so much because they're like the Boston Red Sox were seriously like Curse of the Bambino. It was almost like in Harry Potter while they're like like name you don't speak of. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the like hype. Bambino, it goes back to the hype. The hype <laughs> of episode <it>. two. <laughs> the hype. Watch the hype episode. Really good one. It's I think it's episode nine. Or I don't know. So yeah, lots of conspiracy theories like that. Those are you know you could go on forever about all these and like try to let's go investigate on them. We should, because it's an investigative... Like make follow-up research and see what the deal is. They've done enough follow-up research. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they have. <laughs> We're not we don't, do we don't need to be another one of those guys. <laughs> we'll just... We'll report it to yeah, you. We'll, yeah, <laughs> we'll stalk their work. And, but it, I think that was... The thing is, too, though, because of this... Let's imagine, because a lot of people argue that it's tomato ketchup that he squirted inside of his sock to make it go hmm. red. And... Although he did have an ankle surgery on that ankle. So, like, stitches, probably, potentially. Is there, like, evidence of the trash cans and stuff around the vicinity of the truck? No, that sock place? lives in infamy. It just sold on, not just sold, but a few years ago for $94,000. What? That Kurt Schilling's bloody sock. For one Indy Lights race? <laughs> what a great deal Can on you a imagine? sock. <laughs> the curse of the Bambino breaking sock perfect and the cameras kept like panning to it though because hmm. it was so high i'm gonna look all these up these are interesting well we'll we'll you're show definitely them the more camera. in the loop yeah you're more in the loop on conspiracies it's because i researched them before the podcast <laughs> got it yeah I'm, I'm more into like conspiracies about like oh let's talk about those conspiracies <laughs> what was the one we were saying earlier the most ridiculous one the language thing <laughs> what the language thing then the breathing in <laughs> oh, yeah. Was that it's a one? conspiracy? To, no, not that one. What's the other one? <laughs> we were talking about like with sport. Like, oh yeah. What if like every car, like F1 is a conspiracy and it's owned by like a major power plant? Yes. Who's like, all right, Oh yeah. every car is exactly the same, but we're going to put different body works that look different. And like, you guys are going to pretend that you're a low budget team to make this huge circus. Oh my God. Like what imagine? if there's teams that are, or sports that are this manipulated or countries or something like that's the conspiracy theory I like to dig into. That's really the real how weird ones. Run. That's yeah. Like it's so possible. Like, society. all right, Max, on lap sixty-three, you guys are gonna go down the straight and just bang wheels, and then, <laughs> yeah, he's gonna come out in front or like. It's literally the WWE. Yeah, like exactly like that. 
That'd be oh so God. crazy. And then what, like the, what sparked this conversation was the fact that we're talking about how F1 completely has the ability to make rule changes, to cap budgets on certain things, yeah. or to just change the rules entirely of and, the engines to not give Mercedes and Ferrari the advantage that they have right now. And that should be the topic of our next, of our other podcast. We should do a podcast on like how they manipulate what the grid should be based off like budget caps or rules or like obviously if you give a bigger budget cap the big teams are going to do better no matter what the big funded if you do a smaller budget cap then maybe the better engineers on the small teams could do well yeah um but maybe they don't want that you know maybe they don't for the good of the sport that they keep the budgets keep the big teams happy we should do an episode on that that'd be really good we should we should because you could talk for hours on that yeah and we'll dive into the different teams the big teams that are i mean that's what well, keeps them in the sport. You could argue if we go into that a little bit, but like, you know, IndyCar, budget caps, what F1 potentially could do, no big manufacturers because they have no interest. Yeah. Zero interest. In yeah, you have event. Honda and Chevrolet, which yeah. they're great. They're, they're good manufacturers. They're there for the advertisement, they're you know, for the US. 100%. And they're not there yeah. to like develop their, the latest and greatest of what a they little have. Bit, yeah. But, but not, they, not, that's not the goal, I guess. But it's not Jaguar. Yeah, for sure. No, definitely. Where are they? Formula E. Formula E. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we could go forever. Aston Martin. Um, yeah, conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God, yeah, Porsche. Um, what do we got left for? I think we're close to wrapping it up. <laughs> oh, yeah? We talked a lot about <laughs> conspiracies, all the things we were kind of chatting about. They're things with no answers, to be honest. You know, they're things that aren't... You're, you know, there's people that dedicate their lives to try and uncover these conspiracies. That's and we're actually, trying to tackle it in a 10 minute podcast. <laughs> that's actually surprising. That's surprisingly your job. <laughs> <laughs> Is that? Do you want to like go into that a little bit? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. What that's a, a coincidence. Little, a, a plug that people dedicate their jobs. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> you forgot that you said that. <laughs> the plugs. We are the definition of plugs. <laughs> we are the definition of plugs. Well, yeah, that was Cap- Cafe Machina episode number 11. We're talking about conspiracies today. Do we have anything to conclude with conspiracies? What about the JFK? I mean, this is what you deal with on a day-to-day basis, you know, yeah, debunking. More casual, like everybody knows about it type of conspiracy. Yeah, like JFK shooting. Yeah. What about that one? I, I still think it goes back to the same. Like you can find any major event and find something to use as a conspiracist, you know? Right. Anything, literally, nine eleven, John Lennon dying, anything. There's always going to be like Ooh, that happened. John, that happened. What do you got with John Lennon dying? Well, I don't know. Just saying, <laughs> <laughs> but there is things everywhere. Okay, know? the JFK one though is the coincidences are crazy, but you can find that with everything. It's no, but crazy. not everything. It, th- there's too many. Okay, and there's so much foul play there, but there's also like foul play but there's no conspiracy that type of thing yeah you know like there's other ways to debunk it that clearly the u.s government was hiding stuff conspiratorial and not so much like there's not a lot of like we know the types of foul play yeah yeah. they do that all the time that type of thing i don't know i think it's like this i remember one of my first jokes i remember that somebody ever told me was this it was like what does a like a bird and a phone have in common and it was like well, the bird is white, which is this, which is that, which leads to this, and and the phone is like this, and it leads to this. So yeah. they, so they're t- they're the same. It's like tracing back everything that eventually is going to be like, oh, they're my the same God, thing. it was him. You can make connections about anything, literally. Like if you dig deep enough and you're like mentally convinced, you'll find them. But the the thing is, though, some of them are true. Some of them are still true. There, there's no doubt that stories play a role right. in it. Like the one with Michael Phelps, this is a little bit conspiratorial, but still, he's. it was the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Yeah, I know this because I looked this up. <laughs> but he, a really quick one, Rin, wins, or he, he won eight gold medals that time. He was considered the greatest swimmer of all time. And in the seventh medal round in the 100 meter butterfly, he's down by like his opponent. And this is where it gets really weird, but he makes this last effort, like dash to the finish, as you probably would do. And homeboy reaches out. They reach out at like nearly identical like photo times. Photo finish. It's photo finish. 
there's not one single evidence. There's no photo to be found yeah. of that finish. And they said Michael Phelps win. And when they show the replay, like it looks as if the other guy wins, but it could be really close. But he won by 0.01 of a second. And this is where it gets really weird. Yeah. Is Omega the sponsor? Was the official timekeeper. Yeah. For the event. And he's also Michael Phelps' sponsor. Yeah. That's sporting conspiracies, too. I think those are a little bit more straightforward, too. Are they, though? Well, like, they have more of, like... Like, I'm sure those are true. <laughs> like, they have a much better chance of being true, is what I'm trying to say. Right. Sporting right. ones. That's true. There's a, th- Maybe. There's often time. I know, like, what about <laughs> the people throwing games? Yeah, who knows? You know, to owe the mob money? That was true in the 60s, 50s, hmm. something like that. Well, yeah. Have them let us know what they think, too. See if we're on the right track on... Maybe, our investigative journalism. yeah like if we're if they want us to continue investigative and research and budget towards towards <laughs> and towards mainly conspiracies budget. and debunking them <laughs> <laughs> mainly help us budget them yeah these are questions that'll break your brain they really are and we can dive break into a, a lot of people get their brains broken like pros pro guys <laughs> <laughs> pro people pro conspiracists <laughs> Like yourself. Like myself, yeah. We'll be here for hours. <laughs> yes, we will. And so, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this episode, let us yeah. know so we can do more, so we can allocate time and resources into <laughs> doing the investigative journalism you would hope for. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, our time is almost over, so we'll have to wrap it up <laughs> soon. <laughs> yeah, this is Cafe Machina episode number 11, uh, the Conspiratorial Podcast. Please remember this podcast is always brought to you by minus273.biz. Check them out. Check out molecusports.com and type in the code TJ15 for a 15% discount. You can get on all molecule products out there. All of them. The wash, the Perfect. spray, the wax. And then check out ltd-life.com. Check them out. Plug. Uh, check us out. Apply for tier two athlete ship. Yep, we got or the team three. rolling. They would have to start at t- Tier 3. You got the, the pyramid scheme? Yeah, and maybe we'll talk about this in another episode, definitely, of seeing how it's going back towards the athletes oh, once the team is a little more established. 10%? 15%. 15%, even better than yeah. 10%. 15% of sales. 15% of all sales, not just profits. So good. So we're doing it. All right, so yeah, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about it later. Stay Wrap tuned. Up. See you guys. Yeah,